the New York Form Africa Conference kicks off in Gabon, Libreville today. One of the key themes to be discussed is Africa's opportunities, challenges and prospects for growth. We, are not, we now cross over to our studios in Libreville with Shantia Devrejan, the chief economist who elaborates the World Bank's Africa strategy is standing by. A very good morning uh, to you, Santa. Now let's take a look at uh, Gabon, where you are at this stage. And now Gabon's development program wants it to be an emerging economy by uh, 2015. We have many countries like uh, Kenya and Rwanda also having uh, such uh, uh, initiatives. Are these attainable? Um. Countries like Gabon and other resource-rich countries have a tremendous opportunity in Africa. They've not only been uh, experiencing high commodity prices, which has led to economic growth, but they've shown that they've been able to manage high commodity prices with sound macroeconomic policies. Uh, for instance, when the price of oil went up to about $130 a barrel back in 2007, countries like Gabon and Angola and Nigeria used as a reference price $65 a barrel, which meant that they were saving the extra oil revenues. Now, the challenge going forward, though, is to make good use of those extra resources that these countries uh, have experienced, because we can't rely on commodity prices forever, and they are quite volatile. So that brings up the challenge of diversification. Gabon has to diversify its economy and not be so dependent on a few commodities. Uh, that's also important for another reason, which is employment. Uh, we have 1.5 million people in Gabon and a large number of young people entering the labor force, and the oil sector is not going to generate jobs by itself. Mm -hmm. So we need to diversify the economy, including perhaps in the service sector and call centers and electronics and so on, that could then generate the jobs. But to do that, you also have to develop the skills. One of the things we're finding is that all over Africa is most of the labor force uh, ha doesn't have the necessary skills to be able to compete in the global marketplace. So the big challenge for Gabon is how do you translate those oil revenues into developing the human capital in the country? All right, let's talk about the continent as a whole, Shanta. Growing at 5.4%, and this is projected to go even higher. What are the real opportunities for you looking across Sub-Saharan Africa? Oh, there, there are huge opportunities because Africa has uh, the youngest labor force in the world. Uh, we have seven to 10 million young people entering the labor force every year. And this is a huge opportunity because wages in manufacturing are rising very rapidly in places like China and India. And so jobs can actually move to Africa. Uh, some, pe some of my colleagues have calculated that there are about 85 million jobs that are likely to move out of China alone. Now, if Africa can get even 50% of those, that could be a huge opportunity for labor-intensive manufacturing, things like garments, like footwear, uh, small-scale electronics, auto parts, for Africa to be the, the next engine of economic growth in the, con in the world. Now, looking at the continent at this stage, we have been able to endure all the, the global economic shocks of late. But how worried should Africa be, given the mess that we're in currently, given what's happening in Europe at this stage? Well, it's a concern. Now, the, the first order effect is probably not going to be so serious because most African countries are not that integrated in the global economic, global financial markets as we saw in 2008-9. And you know, to the extent that this is a banking crisis in Europe, it's unlikely to have major spillovers, except for countries like South Africa and Mauritius, which are the countries that are most integrated in the global financial marketplace. And those are countries with fairly strong prudential regulations. But if the financial crisis translates into a global recession, and a major one, we are, I know that Europe is already in a recession, but if it collapses into a major recession, that could have a profound effect on African countries because of the effect on commodity prices. Again, that, as we saw in 2008-9, when commodity prices come crashing down, Africa's growth suffers. Growth fell from about 5% in 2008 to 2% 2 in 2009. And keep in mind that 2% growth with a population growth rate of gr faster than 2% means that's negative per capita growth. That means that Africans are becoming poorer. And this is a continent that can't afford to become poorer, given that 50% of the population roughly lives on $1.25 a day.
And Africa has other challenges just besides poverty. We have uh, corruption, private sector in inadequacy, infrastructure. How do we deal with these to try and get to the place where Africa needs to be? Yes, you're absolutely right that the big challenges of corruption and infrastructure are, uh, and skills development are all there. But I think there's also, a, there are two reasons why I'm optimistic. One is that the economic growth gives you much more space to address these problems. It's very difficult to address problems of infrastructure or corruption when the economy is growing at only 2% a year. When you're growing at 6%, that gives more political space. The second is that African people are actually becoming much, much more open and active in their own decision making. Uh, we're seeing the growth of civil society, we're seeing the growth of non-governmental organizations, greater openness thanks to the internet, thanks to the information revolution. I mean, we have uh, countries like Kenya where 90% of the adult population now has a, has a cell phone. And this means that not only can we transmit information to them about what they are getting for their, for their, uh, from their governments, but they can transmit information back to the government. And we're seeing that this kind of accountability is a, is a whole new world in Africa. And that's going to help us ma uh, manage these very, very deep uh, challenges facing the continent. Santa, you touched on about GDP growth rate of about uh, 6%, but is that GDP growth rate of 6% enough to combat some of the challenges that you and Larry have just been chatting about? Oh, oh yes, no, I think we need um, even faster growth rate than that. Uh, th all I'm saying is that the 6% growth gives us enough space to uh, begin to address those challenges. But those, if we address them, we can get growth up to eight or 10%. I mean, keep in mind that we have countries uh, like Ethiopia that are growing at 10% a year. In fact, of the 10 fastest growing countries in the world this year, 2012, six of them are in Sub-Saharan Africa. So we have some fast growing countries uh, that, can, that can really, really address these challenges. But I also want to mention that this is a, the 6% is an average. And there are a, a, a number of countries that are not growing at 6%, are growing much slow, more slowly. And these, many of these are fragile states. These are the countries that are in conflict, that, that have a breakdown in law and order. And I think we also need to keep in mind that uh, another big challenge is, is, is making sure these countries don't get caught in what we call the fragility trap, where they, they have slow growth for 10 to 20 years. Tell me, what is your outlook for the continent in terms of economic growth? What do you, what do you think are the real prizes right now? Well, we're, uh, we're projecting uh, something of the order of 5.1% growth this year and 5.3% uh, for, the, for the coming year. And that's based on a, a, a base scenario that the situation in Europe, while it might, might worsen, will not lead to a major uh, collapse. Uh, and uh, so that's our base case scenario. Obviously, there's a variation around that. One is that if uh, the situation in Europe really gets serious and we go into another global recession, then growth could come sliding down. But there's an upside to it, too. I mean, if the Europeans are able to resolve their problem, and I think there's a possibility that they will, then growth could be even higher uh, than the 5.1%.